When recently meeting with a client, they had an annuity that they had purchased before we met. It was about to mature and they're wondering what should we do with it? Now for them, we already had a plan in place of what to do next with that annuity. But I was thinking maybe you might have an annuity that you've had for a while um, that's already mature or you have an annuity that's about to mature or you've just had an annuity and you're wondering what to do with it. So today in this video, we're gonna talk about the different options of what you can do with that annuity. We're gonna talk about some of the potential tax surprises that could come along with an annuity depending on what type of account it's in. And then last, we'll talk about how to deter help determine the potential right next steps for you and your situation. So first off, a key word that I mentioned there was that their annuity was maturing. What do I even mean by the annuity is going to mature? Well, annuities typically have a term to them. A term uh, would be the period of years that you need to hold on to that annuity. Well, you don't necessarily need to hold on to it, but a lot of times during that term, there's what they call surrender charges. And the term could be three years, could be five years, 10 years. We've seen some pretty long ones out there that are uh, potentially 15 years. Again, so what you need to understand, one of the things you need to understand about your annuity is what is the term? And it, again, what maturing means is that it's now went through that entire term. And, and here's the thing to understand prior to that term, um, some annuities allow you to take free withdrawals out, but maybe up to a certain percentage, meaning they'll give you a 10% free withdrawal of the account balance or the balance that's remaining or the original principal. Every contract is different, so you have to look at and understand your contract. But over that amount, during the term, the period of years, there might be a surrender charge, meaning a penalty that you would pay if you were to go over the amount that they're going to let you withdraw. And when I say free withdrawal, I don't mean free of taxes. I just mean free of any sort of penalties. So again, just kind of bringing this back in, there's a term. During that term, if you go over the amount that they allow you to withdraw, you might pay surrender charges or surrender fees. I mentioned though, sometimes they allow you to withdraw so much amount without so any sort of surrender charge. Sometimes, uh, for instance, maybe you're in your 70s, um, required minimum distributions. Sometimes they'll let you take your required minimum distributions without any sort of surrender charges as well. So you have to look at your contract to fully understand that. But what we're focusing on today is annuities that have matured, meaning they've made it all the way through that term. And the maturity date means that if it was a 10 year maturity that or 10 year term, they've now gotten to that 10th year or that 10th contract year. They've satisfied all of the requirements of that annuity contract. It's matured and what to do with it next. What should they do with it now? So first off, let's talk about uh, options if your annuity sits in an IRA account. So if it sits in your IRA account, well, we're gonna narrow this down to two options and really there's options within the options right there's there's different things within these two options that we're going to talk about but let's kind of break it down into two big options option number one uh again an annuity in your ira account is you can leave it where it is and option number two is you can roll it into another ira account so let's talk about the first one leaving it where they're it where it is and as i had mentioned options within the option here so if you leave it where it's at and it's again matured, it's out of its surrender period, well now you can start taking withdrawals of the money that you need to take out of that account, um, leaving it where it is. So that's, you can take withdrawals from it. Another option when you leave it where it is, is you could potentially annuitize it. Now we don't see that a whole lot anymore, but that is something that you have that ability to do. What does that mean? Well, then you're going to turn it into a lifetime income source. And then again, leave the under the option of leaving it where it is. Another thing that you could consider doing is maybe you have a rider attached to your annuity. And maybe that rider is a lifetime income rider. So you have to consider, do you want to turn on, when I say turn on, meaning start or utilize that lifetime income rider, meaning it's going to then create a lifetime income stream for you. Or again, under the option of leaving it where it is, maybe you have that rider, but you wanna delay the use of that rider. So maybe you're leaving it where it is, but you're gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna start using this lifetime income rider in 
five years from now or 10 years from now or a couple years from now, whatever it might be. And I'm, I'll talk at the end about how to help make these right decisions for you. But that's the first part, right? You can leave it where it is. And if you do that, there's even different things under there, what you can do, take money out, uh, meaning just make regular withdrawals from it as, as you need money. You can annuitize it. You might use your, your riders that, that were attached to it. Now, the other option that you had was to roll it over into a different IRA. So again, assuming that it's out of its surrender period, it's mature and out of its surrender period, you can roll it into another IRA. Now, maybe you roll it into another IRA where you're just using investments over in that IRA, um, meaning not an annuity, but other types of investments. Maybe you roll it into another IRA and it's you're putting it right back into an annuity. Um, so you can roll it out of where it's at to another IRA account and in that IRA account, you can decide how that you're going to use it. Um, again, we'll talk at the end of kind of how do you decide where and when and what decision to make in, in regards to all of these, but um, hopefully that just kind of narrows it down. If, if, if your annuity is in an IRA type account, tax type account, um, you kind of narrowed it down there to two options of what you can do and then it's just deciding which option is right for you. So let's move on here. Let's just say your annuity is in a non-retirement account. Now, what are the options? Well, in this case, we really have three options of what you could potentially do with that annuity that's in a non-retirement account. Uh, the first option, well, same as if it was in the IRA account, you can just leave it where it is. And you've got the options under the option, right? So you can leave it where it is, take money out as you need it. Um, now, one thing, and this is where the tax surprise comes in, um, on annuities and non-retirement accounts, this is, again, tax where the tax surprise comes in, a lot of people don't recognize because they hear about long-term capital gains, and if I've held something for more than a year and it's got gains in it, and I take money out, I, I won't be subject to ordinary income tax, I'll be subject to long-term capital gains rates. Well. Um, unfortunately, with annuities, things are different. And this is where the tax surprise comes in for a lot of people. The gains in your annuity in a non-retirement account are going to be taxed at your ordinary income tax rate. Um, and same, just to be aware, is that if you pass away and let's say your children inherit this annuity, they're not going to get a step up in basis. They're actually going to pay ordinary income tax rates on all of the gains in that annuity as well. So. Be very cognizant of this if you're doing any sort of family wealth planning, legacy planning, um, and just in your own tax planning um, for where you utilize um, an annuity, if you're using one. I, again, it all depends on people's situations, whether they, they should have one or not. Um, okay, so option one, right, is you can leave it there, you take money out. Now you could get taxed on that money that you're taking out, even though it's in a non-retirement account, if you have gains. Um, the second part, right, you can annuitize it. We talked about that. And then the third part of option one is that if you have a, a rider attached to it, you can turn on that lifetime income um, stream from the rider that you have. Okay, still in that non-retirement account, what's our big option two? Well, the big option two is you could just cash it out. It's in a non-retirement account, but that's where that tax surprise comes in that we're talking about earlier. If you've got any sort of gains in there, you're going to get taxed on all of those gains. What an annuity does is it's deferring the taxes on the gains in that account. But remember, when you take it out, ordinary income tax on those gains. Then the third thing that you could do um, if you're saying, well, I don't need it out, but I'm not sure if I really like where it's sitting at today or the annuity that it's in today, um, but you wanna roll it into another one, you can actually do what they call a 1035 exchange. Now, all of these options that we're talking about today, make sure you speak with a financial professional as well as your tax professional. But what you could do is, is a 1035 exchange where you take it from where it's at today and you transfer it into another annuity. By doing that, since you're not taking it out into your checking account, putting money into your pocket, any gains that you have in the account will continue to be deferred. So there's an option as well. That's how the non-retirement accounts, I'd say that's that third option where the non-retirement accounts now are a little bit different than the if you had this in your IRA. So 
Hope that helps you understand the options. Now, how do we know which route is the best for us or which option that you should be thinking about or whether you need to utilize the rider or to annuitize or uh, should you even have an annuity? Is this the best thing for you? Um, should you not? Y you know, so how do we determine that? And I find a lot of times people have things like when we're meeting with people, they have things in their accounts that they really weren't even aware of or didn't know what it was, or maybe they were sold something at one point in time. So there's things like that that, you know, you just have, but you really weren't sure what it was for and you had bought it at some point in time. And then there's things that are actually part of a plan. But how do you determine what you have, what to do next? Well, I kind of like to use the analogy if, um, of like building a house. Think about building a house. Are you just gonna go out and start buying a bunch of bricks or buying siding or just buying windows? Well, no, because you wouldn't be sure how many windows your new house is going to need. You don't have a blueprint. You don't have a design yet. So the first thing I'd recommend doing when you're trying to determine what should you do next with your annuity that has matured and it's out of surrender um, is you need to have your blueprint put together. You need to have your design put together. What is your future financial story looking like? What is your future retirement story to look like? Put together that design and when you do that, the next thing you're able to create is your blueprint, your roadmap of what you want that house to look like. And as I'm going through this, you can probably sense step by step. You see, if we would have brought the products first, we wouldn't even even known what the house looks like. But if we know what the house looks like, now we know how many windows do we need to go buy? Uh, do we need brick? Do we need regular siding? What, you know, what how much of how many nails do we need right and two by fours and how much of everything do we need we know that because of the blueprint that we've put in place so how do you know what to do next with your annuity well first off is put your blueprint in place and see where does it fit in into that overall blueprint into the roadmap of your future and if it fits in, well then great, you've already got everything solved and you'll know how to do it, but maybe you need to leave it there. Maybe you need to roll it out. Maybe you need to do something totally different, but you won't know until you have that blueprint in place to figure out what products you actually need um, for your future. So enough on that. I think I rambled on a little bit there, but hopefully you catch the drift of how to determine what to do next. So, hey, hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, it was a question that I received that I thought would be helpful for lots of people out there as I know um, looking through different people's scenarios that at some point in time, they may have gotten something and they're just wondering, is it still the right fit for them? or? Maybe you did get something because it was part of your blueprint and part of your plan. And so de depending on which is which, hopefully you've um, been able to see the different options that, that are available to you. All right, so hey, if you've enjoyed the video and you'd like to see additional videos on retirement planning, minimizing the taxes on your IRAs and 401ks or all about social security, subscribe to the channel. We're coming out with new videos each and every week to help you and your financial future. Thanks. Have a great day.